MPs should not be frightened to do their job and to meet the public, which is the most important part of their role. I totally agree. I mean, I know Virginia very well and Mike Freer, both of whom have admitted recently to wearing stab vests during surgeries. It's come as a shock to me. Um, but actually, they feel as though that's necessary. MPs should have the right to um, bring whatever protection they need in the course of their duties. So I fully support them. But uh, clearly, um, the stakes appear to be increasing. Particular relevance to you. Uh, because you were the last MP to see David Amos alive before he was tragically stabbed to death at surgery. I, I was. I mean, deeply personal, as it is for me and everyone, all of my colleagues. Uh, we were in the Middle East together. We flew back on the Wednesday night. Um, I walked David to his car. Um, in fact, he texted me about an hour before he was murdered. Um, so a terrible thing to have to deal with um, for all my colleagues. But um, David, you know... He, he wasn't the first MP to be murdered in the course of his duties, and, and sadly, I fear that he may not be the last. And um, we've got to take this much more seriously. Uh, well, you'll, you'll be aware, James, if you could hear our, our panel before we came to you, that David Mello uh, remains in the studio with us to talk about all of this. And, David, you, do you think the conversation around politics has become so angry, so vitriolic, that it is spilling out into violence towards our elected officials? I mean, I mean was this something that you were aware of? Yes, as of course, an MP? because various colleagues of mine were murdered by supporters of the IRA. Poor Ian Gow was blown up uh, mm -hmm. in his own front yard. People always assume it's not going to happen to them. Mm -hmm. So my view is that if anybody is worried about their personal safety, they're entitled to wear protective clothing because people don't always realise you sit in an advice centre. Normally, <clears throat> there's a lovely elderly person who, you know, brings in the names and helps you with that. They are not trained for their ability to intervene in the event there is a terrible assault, although there was one on a Labour MP in East London, and, uh, and his, 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 his assistant was... I'm not sure he wasn't even killed. It was awful. So at the end of it all, we're a much more violent society now, and taking it out on members of Parliament has become a legitimate expression. And, James, um, pulling back to you here, what do you think is driving this? Well, I certainly noticed when I was campaigning that social media is now so incredibly toxic. There seems to be a sense that somebody on social media isn't a real person. Mm. And, and as a consequence, the, the vitriol becomes so intense that some, some watching, they, they take that further into real-life action, don't they? Do you think social media is, is a key problem here? Yeah, I do. I mean, the threats are many. So in terms of physical threats, you've got uh, the lone wolf, you've got extremism, you've got people with with uh, axes to grind, crosses to bear, um, MPs who may have upset somebody in some way. So the threats are many. But what's really interesting here is social media. And uh, I'll give you an example. A few days ago, a local opposition activist in Binfield, who I won't name, took the decision upon himself to publish my, um, my IPSA costs for the last 12 months. The fact that I haven't claimed a penny above my salary is neither here or there, of no relevance whatsoever, clearly. But, but he did that deliberately to stoke hatred and vitriol online. Mm. So I'm now suffering a piling in Bracknell because he took on himself for reasons, a cheap political shot to put me in danger. And what frustrates me, this guy has got a young family, the kids are the same age as mine. They don't understand the consequences. And these individuals who are posting defamatory, abusive nonsense online, there are consequences with everything they do. And I, I, I am desperately worried about the way in which society is going, the violence, the abuse, the threats, the, the, the toxic climate in which politics is now operating. We've got to nip it in the bud. But also stay safe. OK, well, look, James Sunderland, it's a huge issue how you tackle it, whether the online safety bill is at, char uh, at fault, whether or not it needs to be politicians. Some of the uh, language they use has been accused of being incendiary at times in the past, not least from, from the current Home Secretary. A uh, huge issue to discuss, uh, but we really do appreciate your thoughts and experiences. Wish you the best with that particular incident as well. Thank you for joining us. And thank you to you as well, yeah. David Mellon. And the real concern is it's, it's putting people off even getting into politics in the first well, place, exactly. and, and particularly women.